Hey everybody, my name is Ben Gramico. I'm from InterNACHI and I'm teaching a live class at the Colorado House of Horrors and we have a few students in class, but I also checked the webinar platform and we have almost hundred other people registering for class. And this is a live interactive online class. And if you wanna chat, you can, if you wanna ask questions, feel free but I'll be actually just talking to the folks who are in class um, because um, this is a live hands-on training experience for them. And uh, they're gonna become certified at the end of this five-day class that we hold. We hold a five-day home inspection training class at three houses of horrors. One's in Colorado, one's in Pennsylvania, and one's in Florida. So you can go to natchi.org and uh, get more information about taking a class on becoming a home inspector. And in this uh, presentation I'm gonna do, uh, it's about um, doing a home inspection overview. We're actually going to inspect this house. Uh, I inspected this house and we're gonna go over it. And we're also gonna talk about business and marketing, okay? Um, and that's my name, Ben Gramico, and that's my email. And if you have any questions, feel free uh, just to email me. I'm really good with email. I, I don't pick up the phone very much. If you're not a member of InterNACHI and you want to join, you can take a look at these URLs and these codes. You can enter them in. I think we have a one-month free membership if you've never been a member before, or if you want a discount on a, a membership for the whole year, you can go to those URLs and type in those codes if you'd like. But we're going to inspect this house. We're going to inspect the house. We're going to learn how the house works. We're going to find problems because there are problems in this house. Uh, we're going to talk about the standards of practice, which is basically what you as a home inspector are required and not required to do. We're going to talk about home inspection software. I can, if I'm good at my technology over here, I'll show you my software that I use. We're going to read the inspection report. Um, I wrote a report for this home. We're going to learn about becoming a home inspector, what you should do, business, marketing, because success isn't all about becoming the greatest home inspector in the world. You have to think about yourself as, um, a business owner who just happens to do home inspections, right? Um, and so feel free to ask questions. This is actually a webinar, like I said, we've got about a hundred people attending. Um, they're at natchiorg slash webinars. They're free live and open to everyone. If you're interested in um, not watching Netflix tonight, but learning a little bit about business and marketing, um, I made a series of, of videos, a playlist, called Business and Marketing for Home Inspectors to made it simple for everyone. And that's at natchi.org slash simple. We're really proud that InterNACHI has a college. It's a nationally accredited college, accredited by the National Accrediting Agency of the U.S. Department of Education, a real college. And it's a tuition-free online college, all free for InterNACHI members. So every course you take, online course you take, you're actually taking a college accredited course. And if you don't know how to get your business online, if you're new or maybe you have an existing website that you're not happy with, check out InterNACHI's vendor for inspector websites. And that's at natchiorg slash website. And InterNACHI has negotiated with this vendor, just like we do all vendors, to make affordable websites for home inspectors. And that's at natchiorg slash website. All right. Bunch of people are chatting. Good morning from North Dakota. Hey, why don't you chat where you're from? That'd be really cool. Um, let's inspect this house. Here's my schedule. Here's how I make, oh, I was making a lot of money. Let's, let, let's just make a round number. It was more than that. Let's say $100,000 a year. And for me, it seemed relatively easy to make that money. And I went through 2008. Uh, there was another one later on, you know, there's dips and there's highs and there's lows and we're in a low, or maybe it's a high for you right now. It all depends on, you know, I can't predict for you what success you're going to have, but I could share what I had. I was very successful. We were um, in a very competitive marketplace too. Um, the Southeast part of Pennsylvania, just outside of Philly. We inspected homes inside Philly and on the outside, 
on the suburbs of Philly. And there were maybe 200, 250 inspectors in our market area. And I think we were one of the best. And it was all about what I said before, thinking of yourself as a business owner who just happens to do home inspections. And as a business owner, you have a couple of things you want to pay attention to that are extremely important to running a successful business. That's money and time. And so I want to share my schedule with you because I'll, we were a time management master. <laughs> we mastered our time. We didn't waste our time in making a lot of money. We were efficient, concise. We took care of all of our clients. They felt overwhelmed with incredible value and attention. We had great customer service, but you know we were running a business. So here's my schedule for doing one inspection. I used to do two inspections. I used to do three inspections a day. That was too much. We went down to two inspections a day. This is my morning inspection schedule. And you have to think like that. You have to schedule. You have to think like, what's my life going to be like, like a, a home inspector, a new home inspector? Well, I left early, you know, and I got home, frankly, on time. It was basically like a seven to five schedule if you do two inspections a day. But if you're doing one, maybe the morning is, you know, you're back by lunch, you know, and you're still working because, you know, you're running a business. So just because you're not doing a home inspection, you're still working on something. And it's usually marketing. So I leave my house at seven and I arrive early. I like to be there early, never late. And I do the roof because I don't need anybody there, right? So roof, the roof is one of the systems that you have to inspect or disclaim if you can't get to it. Um, and then my client shows up on time. Basically, I'm done with the roof inspection when they show up. Whew. That's the toughest part, most dangerous part, most difficult part, but it only takes about 15 minutes. I don't need anybody there. So when my client arrives, I'm already into my inspection process, right? I'm like one-tenth down. One-tenth of the entire inspection is done before my client even arrives. I feel like I'm way ahead now, right? So I inspect the exterior next time. The, ne the next system is the uh, exterior. And then I do the heavy lifting. I go inside in about 8.15 for about an hour or so. I'm doing HVAC, plumbing, water heater, electric structure. And then at 10 o'clock, I'm in the attic. Usually there's an attic for me. Sometimes there's a flat roof. There still could be an attic space. And when I'm at 10 o'clock and I'm in the attic, I know I'm doing well with my time. I know I'm making money and I know I'm, I'm not wasting anybody's, anybody's time and I can get to the next job if I have to. And then I've got, the rest of it is pretty easy. Interior, bathrooms, garage, laundry, kitchen. I'm just working my way down, doing the easy stuff and I finish up in the kitchen where, you know, that's where the heart is. It's where the heart of the home is. Kind of like end it there in the kitchen where we summarize my findings. I explain things that need to be explained again or you know, I get paid, then I only get paid after I perform all of my inspection, I take care of my client, then I ask for money, only when they're absolutely happy. And I finish the inspection, maybe finish up additional inspections. Like if you're just doing a home inspection, you ought to think about doing ancillary, we call them ancillary, additional inspections, because um, that's, where, uh, that's where you can increase gross revenue. And if you increase gross revenue without increasing your time, oh, that's the perfect formula. So in business, in the general thing you want to think about in business is you want to um, think of a fraction, mathematical fraction, remember in algebra, the top part is the numerator, bottom part is the denominator, this divided by that. So at the top part is money. You want to increase gross revenue and divide it by your time. Again, time management. And InterNACHI helps you do both, essentially, especially the first one. We, we help you increase your gross revenue. We have booklets on marketing. We have strategies. We have marketing tips on how to increase gross revenue. One of the easiest ways to increase gross revenue is do additional inspections in the same amount of time. So if it takes me, like my schedule here, if it takes me about three hours, eight o'clock to 11, to make about $400, well, 
that's great, right? I'm over, I'm over $100 an hour, essentially. But guess what? What if I add sewer scope to that? Generally, sewer scopes take about 15 to 30 minutes more. So I have to adjust my schedule, make sure it's profitable enough for me to take on that additional service. And I can charge maybe 100 minimum, 150, $200 on top of that. Sounds worth it. Maybe it's a, a termite inspection or um, um, a water quality sampling or a radon test. So you want to increase gross revenue and divide it by your time. If your bottom part is really big, if it's taking you three, four, eight hours to do one inspection, you're not making any money, right? The top part doesn't increase. Your bottom part is, it's the wrong way, right? You want to increase gross revenue and divide it by, you want to increase the top and squeeze the bottom. I'm not saying run through a home inspection and blow off stuff as fast as possible. I'm saying be efficient with your time. And one of the ways to do that is to practice performing an inspection. I, I wanna show you how we're gonna inspect this house, okay? And it all starts with the standards of practice. You have to learn it by heart. You have to know what you're required to inspect and not required to inspect. Because if you don't know, then you'll just be wasting time. You'll be going around the house and maybe being guided by your client around the house. Hey, can you take a look at this? Hey, can you take a look at that? Hey, I saw it over here. And you'll be wasting time, right? You have to be efficient with your time, but do everything, be thorough. And it starts with the standards of practice. Standards of practice, fantastic. Standards of practice is the absolute minimum you're required to inspect and not inspect. But it's also the foundation of every inspection process, every inspection report, everything you do. So the standards of practice. And if you take InterNACHI's courses or classes, you'll learn the standards of practice, like the back of your hand. All right, let's take a look at this. First thing I like to do is arrive early. And the first system that I can inspect, if I arrive early and no one else is there, it's the roof. It could be the exterior, whatever you want to do. This is how I do it. I do the roof. And it's at natchiorg slash SOP is where that first system is. So. I get my big tall ladder and I set it up and I go up on the roof. You're not required. You're not required to do what I do. You're not required to walk upon any roof surface. You're not required to use a ladder. You're not required to do that. This is dangerous. But before I was a home inspector, uh, my brother and I, Nick, founder of InterNACHI, we, we built homes. We installed roofs. We were trained on safety procedures and all that good stuff. So. This is me setting up my ladder. I used to carry 40 foot aluminum, 32 foot fiberglass, 28 foot fiberglass, 12 foot aluminum, step ladders, crawl space gear, all that kind of stuff. But you're not required to do this. You're not required to be on the roof, on top of the roof, okay? It's dangerous, don't do it, but you are required to inspect the roof. And how are you gonna do that? If you're not gonna do this, how are you gonna? Well, it's from the ground. From another vantage point, from a window, um, you can use a pole, an extendable pole, make sure it's non-conductive so you don't, don't hurt yourself. You can use a drone, right? This is now a competitive advantage. This is less than a half a pound, fits in my hand. You have to be licensed. You have to take the FAA pilot uh, exam. We have, InterNACHI has free online training course from the FFA to help you prepare to take the exam. You become a pilot, buy one of these. I think it's 300 bucks, something. It takes 4K images, 4K video. And you can use your phone to control it and take and capture images and pictures. 4K, that means you can inspect the roof from the safety of the ground. Without leaving the ground, you can inspect the roof. That's pretty good. I would do a drone. Because I'm going to, if you and I are in the same market, I'm going to compete with you by, with these pictures, right? I want everybody to know that I get up on the roof and the other inspector in the area that you're considering hiring, they don't. They don't get up on the roof. See, how are you going to compete with me? That's a fun kind of thing about marketing and doing a thorough inspection at the same time, right? If it's something, of value 
to your client, maybe your set of clients, value inspectors who get up on the roof like mine did, then that's where my marketing is going to go. I'm going to promote those things that communicate overwhelming value to my clients. And you have to think about that as well. So if you don't want to get up on the roof, get a drone pilot license and market drones that you do roof inspect. You inspect every roof with 4K pictures and video. Yeah. And then you are providing overwhelming value to your clients. Now we can really compete, right, in the market. So when I get up on the roof, I take pictures of every plane, every flat surface, every thing that's on the roof, like this vent stack and flashing. And if I can get close to it, I'll inspect the flashing around this vent stack. This is the main drain waste vent stack for the sewer. There's another one. Right, probably picking up bathrooms and kitchens or whatever. And I'll inspect the flashing around there. Anything that is part of the roof system. Here's the ridge vent. I grab the, the ridge vent to show that there's, a, there's vents on the roof, ventilating the roof. And we'll take a look at that from the attic around 10 o'clock, right? And then wherever there's a wall that meets the roof, I'll inspect this area and there better be flashing there. Two types of flashing. There's step flashing and counter flashing. Sometimes the siding is used as the counter flashing, but there should be step flashing, little pieces of metal on every row of shingles. If it's a shingle roof, if it's not a shingle roof, then it could be a different type of flashing. Uh, I'll be checking the gutters, but I'm not going to get too close to the edge. I don't want to fall off. I don't have to. Remember, I don't even have to be on the roof. And there's other roofs. There's the lower roof over the garage or something or the entry. And then there's the gutter shot. I love this shot, right? To show that the gutters, that's the front, that's the back. And then I think of how water runs. Water is diverted off of the roof. It's not a waterproof roof. Roofs leak. If you're a homeowner, you should expect your roof to leak. There's no guarantee. Even if you have a home inspection, there's no guarantee it's not leaking. It could leak. It's not waterproof, not designed to. It's just shedding water, shedding water into a gutter. Hopefully it all goes in there and then it goes into a downspout. And those downspouts should be diverting water far away from the house. Even if it's not a basement, that water needs to be diverted far away. Even if it's a, a semi-arid climate, right? When it rains, it needs to be, if it does rain, you know, get what water is great. Water creates life and all that good stuff, but it can destroy a home. So you want these, they're ugly. These are ugly things. So there's, um, I, I like to see this above ground or if they go underground, then where's it discharging? You know, you can make it look nice instead of right in your garden there, right? And this is, isn't gonna do much anyways. It's just gonna collect here. So I like to think, where's this big puddle of water gonna go? It's just gonna go right here which isn't too far away from where we don't want it to be, right next to the house. This takes a turn and dumps it right on the driveway. Eh, this is bent because it's being hit by the lawnmower all the time, right? And if you're trying to explain about like diverting water away from your house to your client in your, on your device, you can show them this illustration or in your report just to communicate what you're trying to get. You know, you're trying to get this water away and sloped down, everything going down and away, right? And these illustrations help you communicate, especially if you're a new inspector. You want a thousand words? Use one of these illustrations, right? And they're at natchi.org slash gallery. So if you're taking notes, you can take down these URLs, natchi.org slash gallery is where you find hundreds, thousands of illustrations to help you communicate you can use them in your inspection reports too. They're free. Also do videos too. Yeah, okay. All right. So do videos on top, right? I walk around and I do videos as well. But you can do that with a drone. Next system is exterior. And I'm down on the ground. I put my ladder away for safety, put it on my, my van. And hopefully my client is in the driveway. Big smile, first impression. 
you know, make sure you have a mint in your mouth. <laughs> Business cards pass out a ton. You know, give your client a bunch. They probably the first time you've ever met, right? So smile, introduce yourself. Business cards, business cards to everybody else, family members, whatever. Let them pass them out. And then you explain what you've done. I arrived early, took a look at the roof. Here's the condition of the roof. Feel free to walk around, ask questions. I want to show you everything, how the home works and, and how to maintain it. And if there's a problem, like something's leaking or something, I'm going to show it to you. And there's plenty of time to walk around yourself. Most of my clients just want to go in the house and think about repainting, recarpeting. Uh, new drapes, um, what are we going to do with the kitchen, things like that. And that's okay. That's, you know, preferable that they're not with me all the time. Let me, let me inspect a little bit. And then I hook up with them later and do a little summary of each system. Like, okay, and now here's the exterior and we've got a couple of things. And then I do the systems down in the basement, HVAC, plumbing or something. And then if they can be with me, that'd be great. You kind of have to have practice of, oh boy, talking walking, <laughs> um, and also inspecting and communicating and writing the report, taking pictures, all these things all at the same time. It's kind of like, a, I don't know, it's kind of like juggling act. So if you're not used to talking and, and inspecting, you have plenty of time to practice. Sounds silly, but again, go into your kitchen and inspect the kitchen. What do you do first? We have an appliance course, by the way. You can use our checklist to inspect a kitchen, step-by-step -step checklist, and just inspect your kitchen and explain to no one who's there or maybe your friend or something about the condition of the kitchen, what works, what doesn't, blah, blah, blah. You need practice. So we're on the exterior, right? Um, Marcus says, use binoculars to do the roof. Yeah, absolutely. You can do binoculars. I, I've always had trouble using binoculars because I couldn't get a picture using, I, I can see what's going on with my eyes, but I wasn't able to do very well with the binoculars. So I just kept them, but I never really used them for my inspection reports. I don't know how to get those pictures in my, you know, put the binocular on top of my phone. Uh, um, this is a window well. So I know I have a basement or a crossways, probably a basement. So there's a window well here, which is um, important. It keeps water from entering the window. And I'm a little concerned because this could be all the way from when the home was built. This is all mud here. And there's a line of water here. Maybe water's wicking up or I don't know. There's some debris there. This looks new, doesn't it? This looks, th these bricks definitely look new. Maybe they're, they fixed everything up before the inspection. That's okay. It's okay. But if there's any kind of sign of water coming in, I'm just going to tag it as monitoring recommended. I want you to monitor this area. And maybe ask the seller, hey, has water ever penetrated, intruded into this window in the past? And the seller could disclose it or not, or not remember or anything like that. So I'm going around the exterior, going around the house in my pattern, did the roof, remember, met my clients in the driveway, told them to go in. Now I'm doing the exterior and I want to keep thinking about water being diverted away from the house. And there's some places where I can't see, like under the deck, I can't get there. I know this is kind of flat. I wonder what's going on under the deck. There are inspection restrictions to just about every home inspection. I can't see everything. Can't see underneath the deck, really. I can't tell you what's going on underneath the deck. I'm going to look. I'm going to do my best to see through the lattice, but I really... I can't see through walls. I don't know what's going on behind the siding. I can't see everything. Like Internet G helps you set your client's expectations that, what, this ain't a guarantee. I, I can't, I got three hours. I'm going to expect about a, a thousand things, right? And I can't see everything. I can't see through walls, can't predict future events. I can't predict that your roof is going to last forever or even a day. It could rain and leak after the inspection, right? I, I'm not a good, I'm just gonna tell you, ready? I'm required by the standards of practice to report upon the material defects. That means like the serious big defects, right? That I see. And if I don't see them, if I don't observe a defect, then it's not gonna be in a report. And if I observe maybe something 
and I don't consider it a major big problem, it won't be in the report either. It has to be two things. So I'm going to put in the report defects that I both observe, see during the inspection, and deem or consider, I consider it to be material, which is defined as really serious. Otherwise, I just keep on going. So there could be a defect right above my head here, right? Right above my head. If I don't observe it, it's not in the report. That's what I would say to anyone who's wondering what is going on, right? Maybe a judge or um, someone who's reading a report or somebody moves in and says, oh, did you see it? No, I did not see that. Or I did see that, right? Oh, yeah. Nope. Click. Take a picture of it. But I didn't consider it to be big and major and hazardous and having an effect on the value of the home or it's gonna, not going to hurt anybody. So it has to be both to be in the report. But you'll find that a lot of your clients want everything in the report. And it's just not practical. We can't see everything, right? You can't see underneath its deck, but I'm going to stick my camera under there. See what I can see. Maybe I can see something. Maybe I can't. I like the clearance. I don't like wood of a deck touching, even if it's treated. You know, I want some clearance there. Nice clearance, daylight all the way through. That's good. That's good there. I see some kind of flashing and some joist hangers. That's good. Can't really comment too much on it. There's also like on the exterior, there's also things coming out of the house. I got to figure out what this is. It's probably like a hot water tank exhaust or maybe a furnace exhaust. This looks like a discharge pipe because it's small diameter. If it's a discharge pipe from a sump pump, we want this sump pump. It's like a downspout. We want it diverted far away from the house, not kind of far away. And if the window wells are supposed to have covers on it, why don't, why don't they all have covers on it? Like this one's missing, I guess. Okay. Siding. Got to inspect the sidings, vinyl siding. I really don't see anything wrong. I'm going around the house. And remember, the roof took about 15 minutes. The exterior is really like 15 minutes too. Also, there's a driveway. A couple marks. That's a cosmetic blemish. I don't have to put it in the report. Somebody sprayed something, you know, some kind of bracket black or something. You know, they could, they should have like not done that, but I'm not going to put that in a report. My client is going to think it's a big thing, right? Because they're like first time home buyers. They don't know what the heck is going on. They think this is a major problem. You know, you're, you're there to set their perspective, right? Make them focus on like, there's only like four things that are really important that really matter in a home inspection. And this ain't one of them, like cosmetic little blemishes or not. We're looking for major hazards. Even that crack in the driveway, that's not a major problem. A little settlement crack or shrinkage crack in the concrete, no big deal. Like a trip hazard that could cause somebody to trip, that would be like, that's going to be in my report, right? But I'm not going to jump up and down about it. So I'm looking for trip hazards. This is smooth, 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 smooth. smooth. And um, like from 10 feet away, I can see like that step is a lot bigger than that step. Can you tell that? Can you see that from here, this picture? So if I go and I measure it, I got my measuring tape. You're not required to measure, but it helps me understand that why does this one step feel bigger than the other? And that's because it is. It's not supposed to be that tall of a step. A riser has a maximum rise of seven and three quarter inches. You can't go more than that from that nose to this surface of the tread. Now that's code. That is absolutely code. There are some licensing boards and state boards that, silly of them, they say you can't comment on code, but you have to find problems like this without saying the word code. Don't worry about it. Just don't say the word code. Let's say building standard, um, building practice, you know, or just say like the step is too high. It could cause a trip. It can cause somebody to trip. It's supposed to not no long, no no bigger than this rise, right? So this is too much. And it's no, no big deal if you feel like, oh, that's why. And it's at the entry. And it's a, you know, it's a egress. Egress is your main thing. You don't want people, like, especially in a, a time of emergency, to be tripping, getting out of the house if it's on fire or something. So it's important to put in the report. Wouldn't go too crazy. The pads on the patio are a little off level. No big deal. Nice dog. All receptacles on the outside need to be GFCI protected. 
That's an easy one. I'm looking for any kind of wood rot. This is a wooden post at front porch, seeing how it's attached. Don't want it to be slipping off or rotten. I like to look at where different things, different building materials come in contact with each other. I don't want any water to go in here in this seam. So I kind of look around, this is the side, maybe look in there and looking for water, you know, areas. It's so much fun to think of water. Oh, here's the electric meter. So while I'm doing the exterior, it's not just about siding, you bump into other systems. Like this is the electrical meter. I try to pull it off the house. If it comes off the house, I didn't break it. It shouldn't come off the house. So I always pull on the meter. You know, it's pull on the wire too. See if it falls off or is loose or damaged. And that's the underground conduit. So underground wire comes up into the meter in the meter and then it goes into the electrical panel. There's the grounding wire, grounding electrical conductor. And we talk about grounding and bonding and all that stuff in our electrical course. It's a college course, free. There's the gas meter. I know I have gas, right? Um, it's not oil. It's natural gas. It's not propane. There's the gas valve regulator. Don't worry about the surface rust. No big deal. And then it goes into the house, right? And there's a shutoff valve there. So basically, I look. you see my hand touching things. That's just a habit of mine. I usually take a picture of the system, and then I get close enough to touch every component and I take a picture of the component. And that forces me to inspect everything, take a picture of everything, and then put that in the report. I know I'm not gonna miss anything if I do that. Especially if some, some system is like a sequence, like this gas meter comes up from the ground, goes to the valve, goes to pressure regulator, goes to the meter, and then goes back in the house. If I can just use my hand, you know, I, I won't miss anything, right? It's kind of fun. All hose bibs, I don't know why they call them bibs, faucet spigots need to be frost proof. Uh, I'm pretty sure this is a dryer vent. Um, it's missing a louver, but that's not my problem. My problem is it's louvered, right? It's restricting the airflow coming out of the dryer. This is a fire hazard. Um, it could cause a fire if it clogs up. Imagine if one of the louvers, all of the louvers, got um, crunched or melted or stuck. You'd have lint build up. And there's a lot of fires caused by dryers. And that's one of the defects in this house, actually. This here. There's something else going on with the dryers as well. Another spigot. Another thing popping out of the house. You know, if I don't know what it is, I'm not going to spout my mouth off. You know? you know, I've been doing this for 30 years. I don't, I don't know. I don't know what this is. I have no idea. Right, but I'm gonna take a picture of it, and then I'm gonna remember I'm on the outside of the house. Took a picture of something weird, pipe coming out, bent down. I don't know exhaust intake. I don't know what it is. And when I'm down in the basement, I think it's the basement. I'm gonna remember I have this thing in the corner, right by the spigot. What is that? So you have to think of a home as a a system. A home is a system of interdependent parts. They, they depend upon each other. The exterior is dependent upon the, the basement somehow. The plumbing is, is later to the HVAC or something like that, right? Independent parts. And when one part is affected, when the dryer vent, louvered vent is blocked, it affects other systems. It affects the dryer performance. It overheats. And when like the roof, hmm, when the roof is when the roof is attic space is not ventilated, the roof covering performance is going to be affected. One parts one part affects all our other parts. So much fun being a home inspector. I mean, it's so much fun knowing, you know, how to inspect homes. And I've got a buddy here. He's following me around. He's going to inspect. I don't know what he's going to inspect. I think it's going to be something like this. He's good at finding his toys. I shake every deck railing. It should be able to hold me in any direction, especially outwards, really. We're, we're really concerned about going outwards, not really inwards. When you have a party and people are pushing on the railing, you don't want to fall them out. Um, and then again, where anything meets anything else, I'm trying to look at this area. So I'll look around, look around down. You know, it looks pretty good. I don't see any, I don't have to see, I don't have to pull this apart. You know, when a contractor comes, they're going to pull that siding, uh, they're going to pull that floorboard out. They're going to see a lot of stuff, right? 
Yeah, well, that's not a, what a home inspection is. Home inspection is defined by the standards of practice. It's a visual only inspection. It's like taking both hands and tying them behind our backs and walking around the house. That's it. You know, the word flashlight isn't even in the standards of practice. You don't even need a flashlight to do a home inspection. You should carry a flashlight though. Another system on the exterior, right? This is the air conditioning system. Could be a heat pump. We could talk about distinguishing the two. I would just wait until you're inside. So you can call it the exterior, <clears throat> exterior compressor, you know, condenser, you know, something out here. And it looks like um, it's settled, this base settled up against the house, and they stuck a couple of bricks under there. That's pretty good. Or, you know, because of normal sediment of the dirt, or I bet it's this discharge, right? A ton of water discharge right here, gets this all soft and starts to settle. So what do they do? Instead of fixing the problem, right? They patch it with this thing. They don't fix the problem. No, no. They just put a brick underneath it. So you can help people find out what problems are. What's the problem here? and maybe a recommend a solution that's actually going to work, right? There's the electrical disconnect, there's a refrigerant line, and there's the thing, and it's, there's the thing, right? It's level now, that's good. You can even see by the fence it's level, but it really should be fixed in a, a better way. I don't inspect anything like fences, unless I see something's wrong, you know, might hurt somebody or, or something. Maybe my client should know about it, but fences are not, part of a home inspection, right? You can disclaim it or you can include it. It's up to you. You can go beyond the standards of practice and inspect the vents. I don't, just don't have that kind of time. I could if I wanted to, maybe for you know an extra fee, I could. Heating and cooling. I know I got a thermostat. I have a Electric shutoff switch to turn the unit off from far away, just in case it's doing something like smoking or something. And then I have a heating system here. Here's the ductwork. I got ductwork. Which way is it going? It's going this way. It goes down here through an air filter, blower fan, heater, air conditioner, ductwork, return, supply. And then this is a bypass for a humidifier. Because in cold climates, um, sometimes the winter air is very dry. You want to humidify it. This is a hot water tank, hot water source, water heating equipment, whatever you want to talk to you, uh, talk about it. And then uh, I see a, a plastic vent pipe coming out of the water heater. So I know it's high efficiency, plastic vent. It's using all, most of its fuel to heat the water. And it looks like it goes outside. This looks like a sewer line. So I like to like look from afar, like what systems am I inspecting? And then maybe remember I, I move in and I try to touch everything. Now I'm close, heating system, air is returning through a filter, fan. There's the burners in here. There's some kind of cold air return, like um, fresh air for combustion and then exhaust, I would say, right? And then this is a condensate pump from the air conditioner unit here, the evaporator coil. Looks like it's been leaking a little bit there. There's electric. Every system needs some electric. There's a shutoff switch. You turn that off to get to the air filter and there's a gas shutoff. Half of everything you do, maybe even more. I would, it could be 75%. I've never calculated it, but I'm just guessing right now. Three fourths of all of your work during an inspection is just identifying what you're looking at. What am I looking at here? Right? And if you know what you're looking at and you know how it should be properly installed, then a defect will pop out to you like that. If you know what you're looking at and you use a standards of practice, like a process for inspecting the system in like a, you know, like a, from a left to right way or a circular way in a room, like every room, I go counterclockwise. I don't know why it's counterclockwise. I go this way, right? I don't know. I don't know why. I, maybe because I'm right-handed. So I walk into a room and I go to my right. I don't care what a living room, bedroom, anything, but basement, I'm going to my right. Exterior, I do the same thing in exterior. I'm on the exterior. I go to my right. I go around this way because I, I know how to identify everything and not have my inspection process. And then defects will just jump out at you. 
if you're here, there, going in all different directions, right? You can't connect all the components of a system together. You have to focus on the system, identify the components, and then you're like, oh, I'm inspected in this process. Maybe turn it on, turn it off. And then a defect will pop out at you. That's why you have to think of an inspection process and put it in your phone and carry it with you, right? So this is my phone. I have an inspection process. Let me see if I can show you my software. Can I show you my software? I use all kinds of software. Here's Spectora. I'm using Spectora. Here's a job that I was supposed to do. I, get, I don't do jobs anymore. People schedule jobs with me. I don't do a job. So here's my roof. Here's the roof covering. This is on my phone. Roof covering. Uh, I can view a reminder. I like giving myself a reminder because I feel like, you know, small, uh, I, small I, I feel smart when I tell myself things, remind myself things, that there are more things I could put in this section of the re inspection report if I wanted to, all these things, right? But let's just go roof covering. So I tap roof covering. Can you see my finger tapping roof covering? And then like, oh, it was asphalt. So there's asphalt, right? And I can take a picture if I wanted to. And then there's limitations. And I always say, I'm unable to see everything, right? And I'm unable to walk upon a roof. Or maybe I was able to walk upon a roof. So I'm going to unclick that, right? I unclick it. And then maybe I had a missing roof covering material, right? And then what's my reminder up here? Oh, yeah. It's about um, no matter what roof covering material I have, I've got code. Shh, we don't talk about code, right? About the slope right? Because there's so many materials. So now it doesn't matter what roof I'm inspecting. I know all about the slope, like underlayment and how slope is related to underlayment and all that stuff, right? And this is the important part down here. Most asphalt shingles, right? Can be used on a roof from 412 to 2112. Boop. So I look really smart using software that guides me through the inspection process, right? Oh, Oh, I didn't practice this, but I can, whoa, it's like infinity, right? So I can take a picture. How do I take a picture? I took a picture. I use that picture in my report. Let's see, it's spinning. It's thinking about using the picture. Cool. Now that picture is in my inspection report. It's going to be up here. Roof covering material. I observe the roof covering material, and there's my picture that I took. So when I'm on the roof, remember? about 45 minutes ago, we were on the roof, inspecting the roof. And I was walking around, looking at everything, every system and component, and I was taking a picture. And before I get down off the roof and start the next system, I used my inspection checklist to make sure I inspected everything so I don't make any mistakes. It tells me what to inspect. And I'm done writing the report for that system. Why? Why do I do this? Why in the world would I go, why don't I just inspect the house and take pictures? I, because I want, to, I want to make money and divide it by a little bit of time. I do not want to work at night writing an inspection report. I want to be efficient with my time, manage it, and do all these things all at the same time, which is to inspect a system, identify the components, find defects, maybe explain over my shoulder how things work and what's important, explain a defect if I find one, use my inspection software checklist so I don't miss anything, take a picture of stuff and write the report all at the same time. You got to practice this stuff. I don't know what you're doing tonight, but you better inspect that bathroom tonight with some kind of checklist or some kind of software Get a free trial from somebody, one of the vendors, ask any software vendor in the entire home inspection industry for your exclusive Internet Chief membership discount. If they don't have one, go somewhere else. Every vendor, every good vendor has to give you a discount, right? So you can practice, right? A free trial so you can practice performing inspection, right? And then you practice like crazy doing all these things all at the same time. I don't think real estate agents appreciate what we do. I don't think even home buyers, home sellers, I don't think anybody appreciates 
the work that we do in a limited amount of time. It's just incredible what we do, right? And the master inspectors, well, we've got a bunch of them teaching your live class right now at the House of Horus. They're coming in and they're going to be master, certified master inspectors, CMIs, not just CPIs, certified professional inspectors, but master inspectors. This is the best class. It's the best five-day class. You're going to have a great time. You're going to learn a lot. Don't be overwhelmed. It looks like I'm talking about a lot of stuff, but this heating system inspection, see all my pictures here? It's really about 10 minutes, 10 minutes long. Boop, I'm done. I'm on to the next system, which is water heating equipment. You can call it water heating equipment. You can call it a hot water tank, you know, whatever you want to call it, water heater. But there is, what is a water heater? Well, a water, it's defined by code, actually. All InterNACHI courses, remember, InterNACHI school is an actual college. This is why you go to an actual college if you want to be a home inspector. You don't just go to Bob's classes because Bob just made it up. You know, this is how I do it. You're going to learn about Bob and his classes, right? All of InterNACHI courses are based upon standards and code. So when you take a course on how to inspect a deck, Take the deck course. Just go through it. You don't have to. You don't have to pass the final exam. Just go through the deck course and look. You'll see, code, is referred to a lot. You're learning code. You're like a code inspector, but don't tell anybody that because you don't want to be a code inspector. You want to be a home inspector. You want to actually make money. Code inspectors don't make money. Township inspectors do not make money. There's not enough of them. Maybe you could. Maybe you could do that with your township. Be a home inspector, make money, and also help out. These new homes that are being popped up and they're doing drive-by code inspections. They don't even they don't have enough people to go in the in the buildings and inspect to see if everything's safe. Maybe you can do both. You're, you're essentially trained as a code inspector if you're taking internet college courses. Here's a hot water tank. No, components, right? I touch everything. Gas shut off valve. That's the flame burner. That's the label. That's cold water coming in. It's plugged in because it has a draft inducer fan, and I touch everything. And this thing that I touched, because I'm touching everything in a sequence as I inspect it, this thing came out in my hand. It's not supposed to be loose. This is the exhaust pipe. If, that, if that's running like that, like I wonder if the current owners get headaches. There's carbon monoxide coming out of that, like this. <laughs> Carbon monoxide. This is incredible. I felt so happy when this thing came out in my hand. I didn't break it. People say, oh, you broke the... No, no, I found it. You know, this is not supposed to happen. When you touched your pipe, like, it's not supposed to come apart, right? This is carbon monoxide. Come, there's something missing. I don't know what... There's a clamp or a glue. Or I don't know. I don't care. It's not supposed to be detached like that. That's why I touch everything. If something breaks in my hand, oh, it feels so good. It feels such a great, oh, it's a great feeling when something, when I damage something that's not supposed to break in your hand. When I grab a, a sink trap and it crushes in my hand and it leaks all over water, all over, oh, I grab my camera real quick and I take a picture of it. I tell my client, whenever I break something, whenever I push a garage door opener button and the garage door comes down and goes, oh, that's fantastic. Oh. Oh, it's a good thing we did an inspection to take a picture of it, right? Whenever I turn on the Whirlpool tub, no one uses these Whirlpool tubs, right? And then I drain it. And then everyone downstairs is yelling because it's leaking out of the ceiling in the kitchen, right? This is fantastic. I'm going to take a picture. I'm going to even take a video. Woo! That's part of your job is to find things that are broken. If it breaks in your hand, don't take responsibility for it. Turn around and expect somebody to tap you on a good job. You know, being a home inspector is so much fun. Code inspectors don't do this stuff. Contractors don't do this stuff, kind of stuff. This is so much fun. And if you're good at time management, like when you're making a ton of cash too, being a home inspector. So it's so much fun. So there's a uh, temperature relief valve discharging to the floor. It's great. I would like a water catch pan underneath the hot water tank. It's all right. It's not there. I'll just, you know, 
a lot of things I can't, if there's a hole here, this is the basement concrete reinforced foundation. If there's a hole behind those boxes, right? And sometimes there is. Sometimes those boxes were piled up for a reason. Uh, maybe not. Um, I won't be able to see it. So just like before, like I'm not responsible for everything, especially the things I can't see, right? So uh, take a picture of things like this, inspection restrictions, because again, remember what's going to happen. You're two weeks ahead of everybody. You're two, you're, you're two weeks ahead of your client moving into a home that's empty, right? So you're inspecting this home. And then two weeks later, all of this stuff is going to be cleaned out. And there's going to be a wall there. If there's a hole there, someone's going to call you up and you'll have to explain, well, at the time of the inspection, my responsibility was two things. I'm supposed to put in the report the defects that I both observe and deem to be material. And I did not observe that defect if, you, if it happens. But look to the left here, all over the boxes, there's another system. There's the water coming in, it's public water coming in. And I can see the sewer line on the left coming out. So let's take a look at the system and the components. There's me touching again, touching from where that water comes through the foundation wall, through the shutoff valve, it's a ball valve, and it goes through. Another shutoff valve on the other side, water meter in between, jumper cable, bonding. And you learn about that. And there's sewer going out. So I think of water coming in, sewer going out. And there's a clean outs. And there's the sewer pipes. I can't see everything. Sewer drain, waste, vent, pipe. And there's the water supply pipes. They're plastic. That's okay. Plastic pipes everywhere. It's like, oh, I'm just looking for anything that's leaking now. I don't know. I don't know where they go. I don't even know if it's going up or down or whatever. It's okay. I'm not, I don't have my level out. I'm not, you know, making sure everything's sloping downwards or anything like that. But I'm required to inspect all this stuff. Basement, foundation, crawl space structure. Remember this thing? Discharging not far enough away, causing the air conditioner to slope. It goes into a sump pump. That's the first thing I try to connect when I remember outside to what I'm doing inside. I remember the sump pump. And so I, uh, the float doesn't work. Uh, I pulled open the lid, stuck my hand under there, grabbed it with a, I don't have it. I have a plastic claw and I try to uh, wiggle the float and it didn't work. So it's all right. It just needs to be fixed a little bit, right? And then there's watermarks here below this window. Remember on the outside, missing window well cover. We saw some watermarks and debris on this window. Maybe it was this one or maybe it was the other one, but look, watermarks. Oh, so, uh, hmm, do I say anything? Yeah, that on the day of the inspection, during the inspection, I observed indications of water penetration through the basement window and I take a picture. Monitoring recommended, ask the seller for more information. That's what I say. I'm not saying it's wet. I'm not saying it's dry. I'm not saying it's from when the house was being built. I'm saying, I don't know, but here's what I observe. And we need more information because I don't, why wouldn't they wipe this up? I mean, this ain't a brand new home. It looks like they had a problem. Did they disclose it? I don't care. I don't know what's, I don't, you know, I'm just observing. I'll put in a report for my client to keep asking. Here's another thing. Did you notice anything in this corner of this picture? Water, water, water. How about that? It's called efflorescence. And it's at the top of the foundation wall. Usually, like you see efflorescence down here where water comes in. And now I got efflorescence at the top of the foundation wall. Where's that? Um, here, 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 here. Where is that foundation? I know I got a better picture of it. Oh, maybe I didn't. Oh, oh, I knew I have it. Oh, there it is. There. So here's the efflorescence. Efflorescence is salt deposits left behind when water, moisture interacts with concrete, masonry, brick, things like that. Yeah, so like there's water somewhere. I don't, there's, I don't know what that's coming from. That's absolutely efflorescence. And it, it's dry, essentially dry. So you can put a, a moisture meter on it, but if it's not wet to the touch, I'm moving on. I'm, I'm gonna, now I have two things. I got this 
signs of act active water penetration. And I got this, signs of active water penetration, right? I need the seller to help my client understand what is going on because I'm just a home inspector. I'm not, I'm not trying to figure out, I'm not diagnosing what is going on, right? I'm just reporting upon my observations. I'm in the garage. That's another system, right? I'm in the garage, garage door opener, lift master, very good, sensors, GFCI protection for all garage receptacles. Foundation looks great. No water penetration. Looks like it's strapped down. It's bolted and nailed. It's all doing really good. I don't, I don't see any termite inspection. I don't see any water intrusion. I don't see like, you know, I'm looking for leaks of some kind. I don't know. I don't see anything. It looks really good. No holes in the drywall, right? That's good. You know, it looks looking really good. Oh, in the ceiling at the seam, there's a watermark. And so that tool there is this tool. It's a water meter. Uh, not really a water meter, an uh, indicator. Because I don't care what the, I'm not measuring moisture content. I don't care if it's, I don't, all this does is like, it gives me, audio, video, visual uh, indicator of a problem, right? And it also is, is extendable, right? So I can go up there and probe things. And there was a watermark up here. It's dry. It didn't, it didn't go off like this. It didn't go. It was just dry. Just like the efflorescence in the corner, just like the watermarks coming out of the basement window. And so what do I do? I put in a report. Ask my client to ask the seller, Tell us what's going on here. Is this a leak of some kind above my head? I realize it's master bathroom. And so we're gonna take a look at the master bathroom. I'm gonna to try to put those two things together. Watermarks. I put them in the report and ask my client for more information. Isn't that funny? I'm the inspector, I'm asking my client, you better get more information. Ask for more information. Here's what I observe. This is my trigger to you to follow up. It's not my, I'm not even going to talk to the seller. I'm not going to talk to the agent. My person that I communicate with is my client. And if I see something like this, I'm going to tell my client, this is what I see. You should probably, you know, look into that. Electrical. Oh, that was an hour. I think I'm supposed to do it just an hour. AJ, am I supposed to do it just an hour? All right, I'll keep going. Electrical panel, you're not required to remove the dead front cover, okay? I do. You're not required. It's hazardous. It can hurt yourself. It's not high voltage, but, you know, you're not supposed to. But if you could identify components, like this green wire, we saw it on the outside of the house. Um, that's pretty cool. What I'm looking for is uh, I'm looking for a rust corrosion. I'm looking for that. And I'm looking for big breakers on small gauge wires. And I don't find any here. You don't want a big breaker, big breaker on a small wire. Everything looks good here. That's called overfusing. Big break, any big breakers on small? No. A lot of stuff here. I don't know what this low voltage uh, adapter is. It could be for the security system. These are things that I don't inspect like security systems and low voltage wiring systems and things like that. But what about AFCIs and GFCIs? In this breaker, I don't see any GFCIs breakers. I don't see any AFCI breakers too. This is an older home. But if you wanted to learn more about where are GFCIs and AFCIs required, you can refer to InterNACHI's courses that take you through the process of how to inspect GFCIs and AFCIs in every space where they're required in a residential home. And you can also refer to code. And the code currently, um, is 2021, section E3902. And it has like little paragraphs like this that explain and list all of the areas, for example, where AFCIs are supposed to be. If I'm inspecting an older home and it doesn't have AFCIs, I am, I'm going, it's my option. You can do whatever you want as a home inspector. It's my option to tell them that AFCIs are now required in new homes. And there's a reason. 
And here's where they're required in all these areas. And there's a reason why, because you know, you're safer when you have AFCIs installed. So I'll put it in the report, but I don't think you're going to get the seller to fix things for you before you move in. But you know, maybe you should do them when after you move in. An example, another example would be if there are no smoke detectors in an older home, maybe the home is 50 years old, 60 years old, maybe historic or something, they probably don't have the smoke and carbon monoxide detectors that are required by today's code. Every bedroom, hallway, every floor, every level, even the crawl space, basement, even the basement. If you're in an older home, they're not going to have all those smoke detectors in all those areas. They're not going to be wired. They're not going to be interconnected. When one goes off, they all go off and all that stuff, modern stuff that help people stay safe during an emergency. But you may want to comment upon those things as a home inspector, just to remember, you're not a code inspector. You can comment on just about anything. Do you remember those three steps in the garage? To get out of the garage in this house, you have to go up three steps. What if my client? can't go up steps. In this house, there was three steps to get out of the garage and no handrail. If my client needs a handrail, I may adjust my observations and recommendations and put in the report that a handrail is recommended, even though they're not gonna be able to negotiate over it before they move in. I'm gonna put in the report as something to do after you move in, right? I'll put it as a defect, but we all know that the seller is not required to inspect. It's, you know, home inspection is not required. Seller's not required to do anything. You know, this is really just information for my client. And you may be able to negotiate for things to be fixed or maybe not, or money or something like that. That's not our job as a home inspector. Let other people handle that. You just try to take care of your client. So I inspect without any regard to the age of the home. And if a home is lacking smoke detectors, I don't care if it's a brand new home or 100 years old. It should have smoke detectors in every bedroom. It should have AFC, it should have GFCIs in every area that it's required now. Because it helps people, you know. So if someone says, well, that's not when the home was built, the home, when the home was built, you know, GFCIs didn't even exist, maybe. Well, that's not, that's not a. So I'm gonna put it in a report. I'm gonna try to help my clients. So you may wanna consider inspecting without any regard to the age of the home. Um, there's that. Uh, uh, GFCIs are required in, in laundry, so there's that one. And there's a missing GFCI there. And that's the standard by which I know that that's missing. And so that's the laundry. So it's an electric dryer. There's the vent going down. Do you remember the louvered vents on the outside? It could clog up. You know, we don't want the louvered vent there. It should be an open hood with a flap that opens fully so that when air exhausts, there's no restriction, it just blows out. So we have a, a vent there. But when I was in the basement, I'm taking pictures and I realized that is that four inch diameter metal pipe isn't connected to the HVAC system. It's something else in the dryer. So the dryer goes down, 90 degree bend, goes this way, 90 degree bend, 90 degree bend. Goes down that way, 90 degree bend, 90 degree bend, four 90 degree bends, 45, 45, and out to the louvered. That's a lot of bends. Code, not code inspectors, code says it was 25 feet maximum, now it's 35 feet because builders were building these big mansions. So they needed the dryer to reach the other side. So they changed the code so that big houses can have big dryer vent runs, but builders have to subtract five feet from that maximum for every 90 degree bend and two and a half feet for every 45 degree bend. So this thing should be like a few feet long because there's so many bends. So not only is this a hazard because of the louvers, it's a hazard because of all the bends and the length is too long. It needs to be shortened or straightened. So this is a fire hazard and it's in the report. And if you don't know this stuff, that's okay. We have a course that trains you on these things. I love looking for dryer vent pipes. And that's what you'll do too, if it's exposed. You'll put the system on the out, the component on the outside, which is the exhaust, the termination point of the dryer. 
exhaust and the vent pipes that connect to the appliance in the laundry. You put those things together and if, if you can figure out, or you can just refer to your notes in your software and look real smart, right? And do the calculation there. So we have this louvered vent connected to a, another hazard on the inside, which is all these pipes. It's too long. It's clogging up. In fact, you could see lint here coming through the seams. So it's probably filled with lint. I'm in the attic. What time am I supposed to be in here to make a ton of cash as a home inspector? 10 o'clock. So I'm in the attic. This is very easy. It's like one minute. It's a trust built attic. It's ventilated. Remember the ridge vents? It's insulated really well. The structure is looking good. Really, I'm looking for big black watermarks and um, somebody cut truss components. Otherwise, it looks really good. Bathrooms. Now I'm flying. I'm doing bathrooms. I'm flushing toilets, shower. There's no, there's no shower panel here. And oh yeah, remember in the garage, we had the ceiling with the watermarks. It could be the shower. I don't know. There's no plumbing access panel. I can't open it up to see where the shower drain is, but oh well, I'll put it in the report. Got two sinks in the master. There are no leaks there. GFCI protection at the, there's a window for ventilation. There's a second floor bathroom, same thing. Flush the toilet, run the tub, run the shower, GFCI, window, door, flush the toilet on the first floor, half bath. There's a GFCI at the sink and there's an exhaust going out. Now I'm doing the interior as well. I'm inspecting these in a little different order, but in the report, I group them all together. And for the interior to be efficient with my time, I remember its representative number representative number of switches, representative number of windows, representative number of doors, representative number of wall receptacles. So a representative number, that's defined by you. It could be one per room or something. So I'm going through, taking pictures of the interior, inspecting everything, kind of touching everything, looking around, looking for watermarks, something broken, a hole in the wall, and I end up in the kitchen. And I'm happy because I'm gonna get paid in about 15 minutes. I'm going to summarize everything after I run water at the sink, dish sprayer, garbage disposal, no leaks at the garbage disposal, no leaks at the pipe, GFCI protection at all kitchen counter receptacles, looking really good. Run a short cycle with the dishwasher. It usually finishes up before I leave the house. And then there's the stove. Make sure it has an anti-tip device. Oven's a little dirty. No big deal. I touch the elements. Don't leave the oven on, turn the oven on, on and then off. The vent in the kitchen really should exhaust outside. Um, that's by code um, and doesn't, that's okay. If you have an infrared camera, um, I have an infrared camera here. This is an E5. Um, I like FLIR cameras, the FLIR C3 or C5 um, is what it looks like. This is from an, another inspection um, because well, this is the, I wanted to show you the image. So when you use an infrared camera, it kind of looks like there was a patch in the ceiling here, yeah, but your infrared camera allows you to see things that other inspectors can't. It allows you to see things that a real estate agent can't, it allows you to see things what other, your clients can't, the seller doesn't know. And that is a watermark. So it was an active leak. And I used my infrared camera to confirm an anomaly. This is an anomaly, it's like a cloud that's telling me something. And so we have an infrared training course and it's free and online provided by the only home inspector college on planet earth so i would take that if you're going to pick up an infrared camera take internet's course all right aj are you, are you there i'm here all right should i keep going or finish up take questions or what you guys got any questions No. Did you see this big, this question from Victoria Green? Uh, no, I, I'm not looking at questions from uh, anyone outside of the class. I want to okay. attend to questions for uh, only classroom folks. Everyone else can just observe and take part. Well, this is yeah. my inspection report. So this is what an inspection report looks like. It's really cool. Not all of the pictures are in there, but um, there's the member of the pipe. I got that in there, correction and further evaluation recommended. And then I use illustrations to help me out. Remember water being diverted around the house, 
um, frost-free hose bibs. There's that step that's too high. And you can get all of these illustrations to, um, there's the humidifier, there's the hot water tank, to make your um, inspection reports look beautiful. Um, there's a sump pump, there's a deck. And then I do a little conclusion and walkthrough, like, Here's what we did. We tried to do the best we could. And here's a pre-closing walkthrough. So when you are buying a home, you get one last chance before you sign on the line at the, with the banker um, to buy the home, to walk through the home again. That's when it's all clean. Remember all those boxes on the wall? That won't be there for your client. And you should invite your yourself back into that process. You can do it for free or for 50 bucks. It's only going to be 15 minutes long half hour, maybe at most. And you don't tell them it's not a report. I'm just going to talk to you about that. I'm going to follow up on, I remember I got the inspection report that we did a couple of weeks ago. I'm going to look at the problem, see if they're fixed or something like that and look for other problems. 15, no, just get cash, right? It's a really great service. You should schedule every home inspection, right? When you schedule a home inspection, schedule the pre-closing walkthrough. Maybe it's an additional fee. Maybe it's included to add value to your service. Maybe it's an, uh, like an additional 50 bucks or whatever you want, but schedule it. Now you're scheduling two jobs, not just a home inspection, but you're scheduling a pre-closing walkthrough. And it really helps your client because they get that second chance and it helps you too. And then I leave something behind for every seller during the inspection. And a lot of my clients, I inspect their home and then they're like, oh boy, he was really good. We got to hire him. And so they hire me. Yeah, any questions? I think we're all good on this side, Ben. Yeah, all right. Well, thank you so much. It was uh, really an honor to be with you for a little bit. If you ever need me, I'm on the contact page with everybody else at Interachi. Um, There's like almost 30 of us and we all work for you. And we're on a contact page. Contact, feel free to contact anybody on Internachi staff. We're here to help you be successful in your home inspection business. And um, again, thanks, everybody. Appreciate it. Stay safe and healthy, okay? Thanks, AJ. Thanks, Ben. Bye, y'all.